One thing I do do every day, and I've do it, done it for the last two months. Uh, I'm not a religious guy, but every night I go to bed, I say out loud, thank you, God. Mm. Mm. Every night. And I don't know where it came from. Mm. I don't know where the inspiration came from, but sometimes during the day I say it a couple times. Thank you, God. So today we were at the Burlington Waterfront in Vermont giving people what I'd like to call the Ray Comfort Treatment and talking to them about their thoughts on the afterlife. We had amazing conversations with many people, but the little problem was that the mic wasn't turned on. But even through my weakness, God's power is made perfect and many seeds were sown. So here's some footage that I found where the audio isn't too bad because I'd like to encourage you all to get out there, share the gospel and get into more conversations about Jesus. So, the first question today is, um, what do you, what are your thoughts on the afterlife? Do you ever think about the afterlife? Uh, as I get older, yes I do. I'm 70 years old, so I, I think about it more and more. When oh, I was younger, you. I never thought about it. I thought I would never die. Oh, nice. so, so, what do you think about it? Where do you, where do you think we go? Um, my father just passed away this year. He was 93. He was very staunch. He was a Catholic, but Christian at the same time. He firmly believed in it. And, uh, I don't have his faith, and I wish I did. Mm. Um, sometimes I ask friends of mine, like my, my younger brother, to have faith. I mean, how do I get it? It's, it seems like such a treasure for people to have it. It really does. And, uh, mm. Something can always fall back on. And, uh, I just haven't grasped it yet. I don't, I don't know why. I'm not. Uh, I know the world doesn't revolve around me, and I don't control anything. Mike, I have a fellowship. I don't, I'm a sober guy, so I don't drink, so I don't, I don't run the show anymore. Mm. <laughs> I thought I did at one time. I don't run the show. But, um, I got to start looking into it more seriously. Like I said, as you get older, you really, you, you, you got a long way to go, I hope. Yeah, I'm really, you really start thinking about it when you get older. Yeah, I'm really glad to hear you say that because we've been praying uh, for someone that oh, yeah. is thinking in the life. Oh yeah, oh well, definitely. Every every day, I, one thing I do do every day. I've do, done it for the last two months. Uh, I'm not a religious guy. But every night I go to bed, I say out loud, "Thank you, God." Mm. Mm. Every night, and I don't know where it came from. Mm. I don't know where the inspiration came from, but sometimes during the day I say it a couple times, "Thank you, God." Mm. I, I guess that's a form of prayer. I say it every day, religiously. religiously. So do, do you know the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you know, because um, I can come with a little analogy and a good way, an easy way of thinking about it that might make it easier to, um, to know. We have these cards as well, and it says, um, no religion, no Jesus. So we're talking about oh, no, a no relationship in, in our God, you know, Jesus. And um, we also have here, it says, For all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. And but God so loves us, but God, uh, God shows his love for us, that in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Right? So, um, do you, are you a good person? Well, I, I think I'm a very, not to sound, I think I'm a very good person. Yeah, you really do. Um, how many lies have you told in your life? How many lies? Thousands. Yeah, me too. Um, I mean, I, have you ever stolen before? Have you ever what? Uh, stolen anything? Yes. I'm a sinner. Well, I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. so, they so, said God loves a sinner, but there's another a little part to that which I didn't like. God loves a sinner that repents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no last part I wasn't doing. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a sinner. I've been a sinner my whole life. Still am, probably. Yeah, um, so if you had to face God on judgment day, would you be innocent or guilty? Are you committing any sins? No, I'd be guilty. Heaven or hell? Where would I go? I hope heaven. But I don't know. It's not my call. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and just go ahead and get those. Get those. Get if he was in a court of law and the judge said you've committed all these crimes, like you've you've got a parking ticket, you've lied, you murdered someone, you've done this, you've done that, right? <laughs> And then you want to try and get out of it. You know, how do you get out of that? How do you get out of it? There's, one, there's only one way you can get out of it. Well, sometimes you can pay your way out of it. Uh, you know, pocket ticks. Uh, sometimes for crimes, you have to do, go to jail. It's not a penance, I guess. I mean, 
So you, so you have to pay for it. You have to pay for it, oh yeah. But there's one other thing you can do is throw yourself on the mercy of the court. Right? Oh yes, we've, yes. We've never seen it in, in this world. They still, you know, you can work as much as you want. You could uh, do this work, that work. You can plead to the judge, I'm going to be good, I'm going to be good. But the judge is still going to say, oh, you've murdered someone, you're going to jail. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so it's the same with God. Like our God's a just God. But he says that if, you, if we throw ourselves onto his mercy, he will take the penalty for you. So that's what Christ did on the cross. Right, exactly. So when he died and when he rose from the dead, he was like, I'm going to take the penalty onto myself. And not only that, I'm going to bring this person into my house so that they can be looked after by me and they could um, learn how to live in a righteous way. Um, does that make sense at all? Well, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of well versed in religious. I went to Catholic high school and I went to Catholic grammar school. Mm -hmm. And my father, a very religious man, he taught Sunday school. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nine kids in my family. I'd say five of them are really devout Christians, Catholics, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Some of them aren't Catholics anymore, but they're Christians. So kind you? of the same thing. And I wish I had it. I wish I had what some of them have. I just, maybe I have to work on it. Um, yeah, yeah. So like, I was the same way. Like, I was... Um, agnostic and I really did not want to follow Christianity unless I really felt like I did actually believe um, in Christianity and you know it's only when I put my faith you know I trust in Christ like I trust the parachute you know um, someone's told me that the parachute works but it's only until I put my trust in it that I actually know if it doesn't right? yeah so it's the same thing it's like a leap of faith where um, you know we're repentant for our sins just like how you said and we're also trusting in Jesus as the parachute, and that's that's all it takes to enter into the kingdom of God, you know. Um, and I love your testimony. I love hearing your story. Yeah, and, and uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, when I get to the hotel, I'm over here for three days. I'm doing a security thing. I picked up a brochure for St. Joseph's Cathedral. I'm going to go to church tomorrow. Oh wow! But I haven't been to church in a long time. Well, we go to a church. I'm away from. I'm from Boston. Okay. And I'm only up here for three days doing a security thing. Yeah. So, so the main difference <laughs> between Catholicism and Christianity is because Catholics believe that you can work your way up to heaven. So it's like going up to the judge and saying, okay, I've committed all these crimes, but I can do all these works. And the judge is still like, okay, well, you still got this fine thing. You know, so Jesus really is the only way. Like, um, yeah. as it says on the card, like, no religion. Um, just knowing Jesus, you know. So I hope that I've given you something to think you about. You really have. You really have. <laughs> uh, I, I think I bumped into you for a reason, so I do believe in that too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I think about it all the time. I'm a busy guy, but uh, I do think about it. every night. I say thank you, God. I don't know where it comes from. And like I tell you, I, I, I arrived here today, yesterday, and I got the card for church for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I bumped into you folks. You know, things happen for a reason. I do believe in that. Yeah, for sure. You know? so, so would you be embarrassed if I pray for you right no, now? No, not at all. Because I, I really want to pray for you. Oh, absolutely. You know, like, find Jesus. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to touch you because you COVID. You can touch me for a while. I don't care. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Heavenly Father, I just said, like, what's the name? Steve. Heavenly Father, I just like to pray for Steve. I'd like to pray that he might know you, that he, that you might show yourself to him, for him going to church or through us today, that he might learn more about your scripture, learn more about your word, um, learn more about who you are and what you've done for us on the cross. Um, just allow him to undeniably see your presence and just like know exactly who you are and who you're about. Just um, apply your grace to him, apply your mercy to him, apply your love to him that he might just continue to think about this over and over again and we might hear a story you know we might meet again that he tells us that he found jesus christ and in jesus name we pray amen, amen. thank you guys hey, thanks thank you. a lot yeah, thanks so so nice you. talking to you thanks for talking with you so guys i just hope that you were really encouraged about what we saw there in that interview with steve and i'd like us to just pray for him you know because there's so many bad doctrines out there and false teachings that teach you that you have to work for your salvation but as we know that salvation is by the grace of god and through our faith you know so all we really have to do is repent and trust in jesus christ and what he did for us on the cross you know as it says in ephesians 2 8 to 9 it says for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not of your own doing it is the gift of god 
not a result of works so that no one may boast so hope you guys enjoyed and check us out we might have more videos like this in the coming weeks okay